We're here from Canada to Rome, Scotland, looking for a perfect beach, unfurling our tent wherever it strikes us, then grabbing our boards and heading into the surf, with no fear that someone will accuse us of trespassing. There are few places in the world where we can do this, where we have a legislated right to roam, with respect, across a privately owned farm, Queen Elizabeth's Scottish castle, and even through Donald Trump's golf links. Something that completely surprised Trump when he built the golf course. It's a heady experience when you come from a place where you're normally confined to government or private campgrounds. The right to roam, as it's informally called, has its roots in the Scottish belief that there really is no such thing as trespassing, which in turn likely stems from an ancient custom, the idea that natural resources are not privately owned, but held in common. Private property was at one time a radical concept, and when it reached Scotland, lives changed drastically. These abandoned stone shelters are visual reminders of that time, and reminders that a massive land grab booted many Scots off the land. It didn't take us long to meet the sinister creatures that forced thousands of Highlanders into cities, crofting villages, and even to other countries. Admittedly, some left for better economic opportunities, but still, sheep ushered in a new era. How did this mild-mannered creature pretty much change the world? Once upon a time, land and resources were held commonly. Private, individual ownership as we know it today did not exist. But around the 16th century, rising wool prices in Europe led to a land grab in England, which helped launch the concept of private property. Those quick enough to act on the changing economic winds began enclosing what had been a common resource and evicted people by the thousands. By building stone walls or planting hedges and keeping sheep in their manure, a potent fertilizer, in one place, some people became very wealthy. Land, once community controlled, suddenly became a means to wealth and power for individuals and their descendants. By 1900, half of the Scottish Highlands were held by just 15 landowners. Legislating the right to roam was the Scots' attempt to keep access to land in public hands. Each time we set up camp, we asked permission, and we were only once turned away from a meadow easily eroded. A villager apologizes and sends us over the hill to a location much better for paddleboarding. We share the beach and some scotch with another couple of roamers and the bay with a couple kayakers. The value we place on Scotland's right to roam legislation has no price tag. The beautiful places and beautiful views belong to everyone. We can't help but think that this equal access nourishes societal ties and fosters a sense of democracy.